Hey, hey, YouTube. This video is going to be day one of our testing on the Raptors Discord training server. Uh, I'll be trying to release these videos each day, unless I have a valid reason to not care. And uh, you can follow these videos from the beginning, in which case your support will be very much welcome. Or you can just subscribe to the channel and wait for the last video, which I'll make sure it's nice and flashy for you. And I'll basically be covering everything we found. So let's get on to the first test we did. Uh, given the fact that we are the Raptors Discord training server, we wanted to work out if Raptors have become a little bit stronger. And the main thing of that was bleed. Now, if any of you guys have been part of the channel for a while, you may remember my Stegos are cracked video. Spoilers for another one of the videos in this series, uh, Stegos are still cracked, so don't worry. And the thing that I noticed with the Utah bleed total is that there was always a constant 0.3 bleed that carried over no matter what pounce I did. At the time, I didn't understand this at all. It, it didn't make sense. Um, I chalked it up to the fact that it was just the decimal points being wacky, but it took me a while to figure it out. And I've now been testing this. Is that when you initially start a pounce, you deal a larger amount of bleed at the very, very beginning. The initial first one second of pounce, you deal the highest efficiency of bleed. That's your too long didn't read of this video. Tap pouncing or tapping for one second on a pounce is three times as efficient as holding that pounce. In fact, once you pounce a dinosaur for longer than 3.5 seconds, you have worse than diminishing returns. It exponentially decays, as I'll be showing in the graphs in a minute. But first of all, you guys can see the data on the screen, but I can just briefly explain it to you. So a full pounce takes about 21 seconds. And you deal about 30% bleed. Uh, to calculate all of these things, I had to work out the initial bleed, which is pretty easy, and then the final bleed, and then work out the bleed over time for the initial and final. So the final starting from where the initial ended off. And then you can work out a bleed per second for the entire duration. The bleed per second is where we're going to be focusing most of our attention. Because the rest of the numbers is basically how we have a null hypothesis to see, is it the initial bleed? Is it the final bleed? And the answer is it's the initial bleed by a lot. So for a 21 second pounce, you're dealing 1.4% bleed per second over that 21 seconds, right? This is excluding the 60 seconds that it takes to bleed, right? But from that pounce, if you were to take all the bleed at once, you're doing 1.4 seconds. That's your efficiency. You have an efficiency of 1.4. Now we have the next one. Uh, pa 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 pouncing for six seconds. Uh, if you do a pounce and the opponent bucks and you waste all of your stamina because you're respecting your Japanese ancestry and Death before dishonor and bonsai, uh, you're gonna die, but you have an efficiency of 1.6. So it's increased. You did a shorter pounce, but your efficiency increased. That's pretty fantastic. So you have here the fact that it then goes into tap pouncing. And tap pouncing obviously is gonna have an efficiency from the one second. And you deal 4.45 bleed in one second, which gives you an efficiency of 4.45 times, which is ridiculous. This is about three times as efficient as just full pouncing. And uh, that's effectively the TLTR of this video. If you want to get the maximum efficiency out of your pounces, you want to latch on and instantly latch off when it lets you. It should be about one second. And you'll be doing 4.5 bleed against a Kano. Against a Stego, it's a much smaller number. It's 2.45. And for Tenno, it's going to be pretty similar to the Kano due, due to their weights. So it takes about 22 tap pounces to kill a Kano, and it takes one bite to finish it off. Now, in actuality, this number is less, because the Kano's going to be running around. It's going to be dropping that bleed faster. Furthermore, uh, due to the help of Kami, we were able to look at the graphs, which I'll be showing you as well on the screen. Let's get the right one up. You see that there is a line, which basically shows an exponential decay. Uh, once you hit about two seconds, you, within the first like two seconds, you've basically lost a lot of a lot of your efficiency. You want to be pouncing for short bursts of time. Uh, two seconds is the recommended because you get the best of both worlds. You have the very very efficient initial pounce, and then you have the slightly more damaging bleed over time. So you get really really good out of this, which therefore means it probably can take maybe about. 10 tap pounces to kill a Kano. We need to test this out in battle, of course, because in during these tests, the Kano is just standing still. 
So, what this basically means, if the Kano is running around, you're actually going to be able to do, probably get away with less than 10. It could be something stupid. My prediction is that it's probably going to be around 10, and it might drop down to like 8, or, or something. But yeah, this is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, we're not sure if this is an intended feature for the game to have, in which the initial pounce has to do more damage. But the way that I see it is that if uh, the way that I see it is that the devs understand that herbivores are going to be traveling in packs, including carnivores. And so when you latch on for a pounce, you're unlikely to get a long pounce off. So therefore they made it very, very efficient at the start, such that even if you pounce for a second and the thing you're pouncing's friend comes along to hit you off, you can dismount and safety run off and you still actually get something for it. What this means, however, is that if you understand this mechanic, as you now do, and I do. Uh, it means that you can metagame it. You can just pounce for two seconds and just let latch off. You know, that doesn't give enough time for most things to actually react and do this. Especially if you're working in a whole group. But well, you can get two pounces off simultaneously. You can latch off, then latch back on and latch off. Uh, if you're doing this, you can do eight tap pounces until you have no stamina. Right? And if you do this, it's absolutely incredible. If you do this, the Kano is left with 60% health, right? Now that may not seem like an impressive thing to you, but remember, this is 8 tap pounces until your stamina runs out. A full pounce of 21 seconds, or until your stamina runs out, only dealt 30% of the Kano's bleed total. You've doubled this by just holding on for a second and letting go, right? Consider that. Holding a pounce for one second has basically doubled the amount of bleed that, that you're doing. And that's 8 tap pounces, which got to 60. If we assume that bleed works similarly to Legacy, where if you're running, it doubles the amount of bleed decay you have, that is going to be left with like 30% bleed. Right? That's ridiculous. That's actually ridiculous. Uh, your normal bites deal about 3 bleed over the course of 60 seconds. So basically, you add another like 15 bites, and you're done. Or you could just add a few more tap pounces from another Utah. But my prediction is is that, yeah, it's probably going to be about 10 tap pounces to completely kill a Kano with it running around. Because by the end of that fight, it's going to be sprinting for its life, right? Uh, it's just, it's ridiculous, basically. Uh, God bless anyone who runs into this. And to back it up, of course, we have to test the Stego. Or as I apparently have spelt it, the Strego. You heard it here first. You've all been pronouncing it wrong. Clearly, I'm right because I'm better than you. So, a full pounce in a stego deals an absolutely abysmal amount of bleed, and you're left with a final bleed of 10. So, with a 21 second pounce, you do 10 bleed. Compared to the Kano, we need a 30, which means that you can effectively infer the data that the scooby blah, 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 the stego has a 30%, takes three times less bleed than the Kano does, right? And if we look at the Kano's weight and the Stego's weight, there's about a three times difference between it, which means I want to start doing some testing on day two, which will be today, actually. I'm recording this in the morning, which is technically the afternoon. Damn, time is relative, I suppose. And I want to see if it's to do with weight, because a lot of things in the game have been changed to weight-based recently, especially Packy, and we'll be getting onto that. Uh, Packies are on Suicide Watch. I find it funny, but we'll see. Um, we can actually see this again. With the bucking pounce, you do 3.9. No, you get 2.9% bleed with the bucking pounce. Whereas with the Kano, you deal just under 10. So that's basically another factor of 3. And the same thing, but here's where it gets interesting. That's the same thing. The same thing with the tap pounce. Uh, you see that the efficiency all of a sudden increases. You now do 2.4 bleed. Aha, which is actually half. Half. So consider this. You're fighting a Stego. You could pounce it. However, if you tap pounce, you are twice as efficient. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You are half as efficient tap pouncing a Stego as you are against a Kano. However, you are three times less efficient pouncing a Stego normally than you are pouncing a Kano. So why would you not take... 50% efficiency. Did you just get more bang for your buck? Instead of being 33% efficient, you're now 50% efficient. 
right? That's ridiculous, in my opinion. Uh, but we're going to get on to why this doesn't actually matter for the Stego. If you watch my Stego is Cracked video, you can probably see where this is going to be going. But yeah, ridiculous. Uh, you can do 11 pounces, pouncing at the air and hitting nothing. So we basically now uh, found out that to latch onto something and latch off actually takes stamina. Which is pretty impressive. Uh, with tap pounces, however, you can actually drain your stamina all the way to the bottom, pretty much. You're left with bugger all stamina. Whereas if you're just doing a full pounce, you're left with 13% stamina. So I use this 13% stamina value to um, basically work out what the 30% bleed stat would be if you were able to dump all of your stamina into it, which would gain another 3.9 bleed. You know? It would just made the data even more conclusive. Uh, Kami basically explained, I'll put it on at the end of this video, basically explaining how the graph works. And it's effectively, it's an exponential decay. It's just under. Uh, you deal the most amount of bleed at the very start, and this decreases over time. As I said, this is probably because the devs want to make sure that you actually get something out of your bleed, even if you get, you know, fucked off straight away. Uh, yeah. Honestly, I'm just a bit surprised, to be honest. Uh, but I'm glad I was able to test my high hypothesis I had before and actually confirm it. And I hope that this guy, this guide, at least to how bleed is now functioning for the Utah's pounce, uh, can help you guys with your hunts. That's what I really want. Uh, the aim of this channel of testing has always been to try and bridge the gap between the bad players and the absolute sweats, right? And I want to see myself as the bridge between those two worlds. Right? It means that you, who may not be the best player in the entire world, you may not have all of the mechanical advantage, but you can have at least an understanding of how the best players in this game, I say best players instead of knowledge, because for me it's mainly knowledge. Right, My actual ability to play the game is gimped because I'm on a gaming laptop. I'm hoping to upgrade it. Maybe with you guys' support, I can actually <laughs> go on to do that. Please, <laughs> I beg. <laughs> I'm tired of this thing. Um, yeah. It would mean that you can actually have that same knowledge and know what they're thinking and know what their plan is. And it can help you survive against players who are of an equal skill level to you. Because that's what I want. I don't believe that this game can be balanced at all if we have this huge disconnect between the worst players and the best players. In fact, the average player, in my opinion, is closer to the worst player. I mean, put it this way. They've added in an automatic alt bite if you're standing still. Because still, so many people don't know how to alt bite. There are Dinosuchuses who don't know how to lunge, and they complain that the Dinosuchus's lunge uh, bite force should be increased because they can't kill things quickly. It's like, of course, because you have to lunge them and drag them into the water. Like, they don't, you know what I mean? Simple things like that. But we can go even further, you know, and just really help bridge the gap. That's what I really want. I really want you guys to shine and just enjoy this game for what it is. And one day, I want to be able to go out with my hunting pack with the training Discord server. And I want to be able to like run into some of you guys one day, you know, and I want to be able to see you guys showing knowledge and game awareness that, you know, I've taught you. I don't care if you kick my ass, you know, seeing someone pull off a strategy, the strategies I'm going to be showing you and that I've been theorizing, I'm going to be testing, would bring a smile to my face. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and now we're going to listen to Kami being a giant bloody nerd. Cheerio. Oh, Cheerio sounds gross. Fuck that. Nah, nah, nah. Cut, cut.